Welcome to the third part of this three-part video series. Part number one showed you how to build the setup. Part number two showed you how to set up the necessary software. In this part, I'm going to show you how to get the best possible audio quality out of this setup, how to manage the Wi-Fi connection between smartphone and camera to make it a workable everyday vlogging setup, and I'm going to finish by showing you what kind of performance you can expect when it comes to lagging on both an iOS and an Android device, and how to reduce lag on an Android device. So once again, let's go do it. <music> Now the problem you're gonna run into is this. As soon as the camera is connected to a smartphone via Wi-Fi, there's no way to manually set the levels for the microphone anymore. Basically that means you're now at the hands of the auto gain control of the camera, which unfortunately does quite a terrible job with microphones that are connected via the 3.5 millimeter input. The biggest problem, apart from picking up Wi-Fi interference from the connection between camera and smartphone, is that during a silent period, the auto gain control boosts the signal way too much. So once then you start talking, inevitably audio peaks. Now this is what you're getting from the Texta SGC598. It's a decent budget microphone, but as you could hear already, once I started talking after that silent period, audio peaked. Auto gain control does come in and levels down the signal, but it's just way too slow in doing so. Now this is the Ceramonic SRM3, and I just had to show you this one because in terms of gain control, it is by far the worst. This goes to show you that you're gonna get different results with different microphones. Again, auto gain control does come in, but it's just not responsive enough. Now this is what you're getting from the Rode VideoMic Pro. And if there is such a thing as the standard go-to vlogging mic below 200 bucks, this one is it. Unfortunately, the most expensive microphone out of all of the ones that I've shown you is also the one that catches the most Wi-Fi interference. So to this problem, if you do want to hook up external audio, not rely on internal audio, which in case of a vlogging setup like this makes a lot of sense, there's really only one good solution. And that is using a microphone that plugs right into the multi-interface hot shoe, not the 3.5 millimeter input. Now the selection of Sony multi-interface hot shoe compatible microphones is limited, but there's one that perfectly fits this setup. And it's called the ECM GZ1M gun zoom microphone from Sony that I'm currently using set to gun. When using it, there will be no peaking, no Wi-Fi interference, no matter the position of the phone. You will get decent quality directional audio that's wind protectable by a foam windscreen and dead cat. And all of this combined with a form factor that really fits this setup. Now it used to go for around about 100 bucks, which in my opinion is kind of ridiculously overpriced. Right now it's going for about 60, which is okay, but if you happen to have the chance to pick it up used, or maybe as a warehouse deal, for around 40 bucks, it actually becomes quite the decent deal. Let's say you want to connect your smartphone to your camera and you're doing everything exactly the way you should, starting the smart remote control app on your camera, then on the smartphone, going into settings, connections, Wi-Fi, and connecting to the camera's Wi-Fi signal, exiting settings and starting the Sony Play Memories mobile app. Let's say you know for sure that for some extended period of time to come, you're not going to need your smartphone as a live view monitor slash remote control and you want to save some battery life. If you simply turn off the screen, on an Android device, unfortunately, this will both exit the application and disconnect from the camera's Wi-Fi signal, essentially killing both the live view on the smartphone and the camera. If you wanted to have live view again, you would now have to completely exit the Smart Remote Control app on the camera side. And if now you wanted to re-establish the connection, you'd have to go through the whole process again. So here's two simple things you can do to make vlogging a lot easier on yourself when you're using this setup. Step number one, go into the Play Store and search for an app called Blacker. Blacker AMOLED Screen Off. Install that one. Exit the Play Store, navigate to the app's shortcut, open it, and for the time being, simply enable the application service up here. Then exit the app. Step number two, go to settings, connections, Wi-Fi. Then tab hold your standard Wi-Fi signal. Go to manage network settings and uncheck auto reconnect. Then save. Again, start the smart remote control app on the camera. Wait for the Wi-Fi signal to appear. Connect to the camera's Wi-Fi signal. Then tab hold the camera's Wi-Fi signal. Again, manage network settings is where we're going. And this time select auto reconnect. Again, save. Exit the settings and start the Play Memories mobile app. Now this time, if you wanted to save some battery life by turning off the screen, all you would have to do is swipe twice and check this out, like a touch to activate. 
and that's how easy it is to black out the screen without losing live view because the app is still running in the background. Just the screen is blacked out. And with an AMOLED display, that means that all the pixels that are black are actually not in use. And if you want live view again, you just tap once and there you go. Again, let's say you want to save some battery life, this time on both the smartphone and the camera. So you would exit the Play Memories mobile app on the smartphone, turn off the screen, then exit the Smart Remote Control app on the camera side. Now, if you want to re-establish the connection, there's a difference. Now, all you have to do is start the Smart Remote Control app again, turn on your phone and just tap the Play Memories mobile app. And then it says connect to. So all we do is tap that and there you go. No menu dive, automatic reconnect. Let's establish a connection, turning on the Smart Remote Control app on the camera to have it put out its Wi-Fi signal. Then go into settings, tap the info icon behind your standard or home Wi-Fi and turn auto join off. Then connect to the camera's Wi-Fi signal. Again, tap the info icon behind it and turn auto join on. Exit settings and start the Play Memories mobile app. And now if you want to save some battery life on the smartphone side, simply turn off the screen because in case of iOS, the smartphone doesn't disconnect from the camera's Wi-Fi signal. Hence, you will still have live view on the camera. And if you want live view again, turn on your phone and the app will automatically reconnect. No menu diving, you don't even have to open it. And should you want to exit both apps to also save some camera battery life and then decide you want to re-establish the connection again, all you gotta do is start the smart remote control app again and then simply wait for this screen to appear because this screen tells you that the smartphone has reconnected to the camera's Wi-Fi signal and the Play Memories mobile app is ready to give you live view. Now when it comes to lagging on both an Android and an iOS device, there's one problem we simply can't get rid of. And that is the problem of initial lagging upon establishing a connection between smartphone and camera for the first time. And as you can see, you're going to start out with pretty laggy live view. But once the connection is established fine, the experience will be much smoother. And looks like it's now got the connection down right. But every once in a while, as you could see right now, it will revert back to a rather laggy live view before again giving you a smooth experience. Usually movement like this isn't the problem. You could also go a little more crazy. There will always be some lag, but overall it's a smooth and for the most part workable experience. Now you could also try and overdo it. And as you can see, even with that much movement in the frame, overall it's a workable performance. Best case scenario, of course, you have a flagship phone with the latest Wi-Fi tech built into it and no other Wi-Fi signals interfering with your own. This here is my Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge and even without any tweaking, it delivers a good performance. However, if you do run into severe problems with lagging on your Android device, there's two simple things you can do to help boost performance. Number one, switch to this live view mode where the live view area is smaller. Sometimes going vertical also helps out, although looking at live view this way is rather inconvenient. To show you the second tweak, I have to exit the app. Go into settings display come down here to screen resolution and go from QHD all the way down to HD then select apply. So once again let's establish a connection. Now the initial lag is something we just can't get rid of. But once that's overcome we're pretty much good to go. Unfortunately, there's nothing you can really do to boost performance of an iOS device in regards to lagging and this setup. On the other hand, they are great performers as it is. Still though, we're gonna run into the problem of initial lagging upon establishing a connection between smartphone and camera for the first time. But after this initial period of pretty laggy live view, the connection will be strong and the experience smooth. Even when going a little crazy or possibly a lot crazy. Only very rarely will you have a freeze frame that lasts for more than like two to three seconds, at least with my iPhone 7 here. Although I have experienced freeze frames that lasted up to seven, but this only very rarely happens. In my experience, anything up from and including an iPhone SE will give you workable performance. So if you liked the video, if you found it helpful, if you haven't already, feel free to check out parts number one and two that are linked up there. And please make sure to leave a thumbs up. It's greatly appreciated. Any kind of comment or feedback is welcome and I'll try to answer as quickly as possible. Also, should you feel like supporting the channel, definitely check out the video description. There might be some product links that are interesting for you. In any case, as always, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for watching and hopefully see you again soon.